See, before going to discuss about FSCM functionalities, it is mandatory to know so what is the difference between standardized system and enhancement system. So as we discuss, we are going to start with credit collections, disputes, below direct and debt recovery management. So the first and first is we need to understand what is the difference between enhancement system and also standardized system. So as a FSEO consultant, we know very well so that we are going to use a standardized system. That means all the things are already customized. So what we are going to do is we are going to design according to the requirement of the client and we are going to execute the reports and we are going to execute other transactions, whatever we require. So but in FSCM, the first application is as a FSCM consultant, you need to check whether these bodies are exist or not. So that means for each and every step, we have different bodies applications are there. So this is uh, activated since ECC, ECC 6 onwards. So why this enhancement is done? Because whenever a customer required according to the customization, that means whatever he required, we need to customize according to his requirement. In that case, when we are going to process it, so without activating this body application, we cannot use the such a functions. Say for example, I will give you a small example. So when we are updating collection process, if the body application is not activated for segments, collection segments in the standard in the system, so the system will not display any collection segments in business partner. So whenever you activate that body application, it is automatically get activated and it will be displayed in business partner. So like this, total 38 body applications are there in credit management and we have 15 body applications are there in collections management. So and in dispute management, we have three types of body applications. So like this, in each and every step, we require different, different body applications. Okay. Sir, how we need to understand and how we need to activate this body application? The first point is, as a FSCM consultant, you need to understand which body to be activated. That's all. So this body, that means the business transaction code, we are going to forward it to the technical team. They are the responsible persons to activate this body application. Okay. This functions is required even though if you are using IDS system also. In IDS system also, this is mandatory. So if you are using your personal system, the first suggestion is let us check that and activate the body applications wherever it is required. So now come to the next step. What are the technical configurations required to process this FSCM functionalities? So here we required XI interface. That means um, extended uh, XI interface as well as XCM deployment, extended communication management and also WSRM, which is also called as the server protocols. So like this, some technical applications are required. So I will tell you recording to the concept wise. The first thing is in today's session, what I'm going to explain you is, what is the business scenario which we need to follow in FSCM functionalities? So the thing I'm first, I'm going to discuss about business scenario. Then we will discuss the remaining. See, in every organization, we have two types of business partners are there. One is existing business partners are there and new business partners are there. So let us say, I am a customer. So I am not the existing one, I am a new customer. So when I was approaching your organization, I re that means some goods I am going to purchase from your organization. So that I require some credit from your organization. But the point is, you don't know who I, who I am. So what we need to do is, our salespeople are there who is going to take the customer details from customer and they are going to update the customer ID. Based on the customer ID, they are going to generate the inquiry and quotation document. So this is for new customer, not the existing customer. Then. So this, we don't have any data related to the customer. We don't know what, how he is going to pay and whether he's cleared the payments or non cleared the payments. Is there any dending notices? We don't know nothing. So because he is not our customer. So what we are going to do is we are going to send this customer ID to external rating agencies. Then 
who is external rating agencies some research firms government organizations so like this some uh, external rating agencies are there so our company has some external rating agency let us take cyber is one of the external rating agency what they are going to do is they are going to analyze this customer so and also they are going to give some rating and rank so once the rating and ranking is updated so this data along with the customer id is forward to fscm with the help of xa interface xa is a tool technical tool which is used to transfer the data from external system to sap system so with the help of xa people what we are doing is we are transporting the data to fscm system so once it is imported that means the customer data has been imported so here as i already told you this fscm functionalities are purely enhanced functions that means we need to run according to the client requirement these are not standardized functions so the first job of credit manager is he need to convert this customer into business partner with the help of master data synchronization so this is the first topic which i am going to explain so by using this master data synchronization we can convert the existing customers into business partners of credit management or we can con- we can convert whenever a customer is created just one second
see so here once uh, the customer is converted into business partner of credit management what we are doing is so in business partner concept we need to learn in different different ways that means you can convert the customers into business partners or you can convert the business partners into customers so and also you can convert the vendors into customers and again vendor uh, so customers to uh, sorry vendors to business partners and business partners to vendors there are a lot of scenarios here there so once these scenarios are done that means master data synchronization done so you are in position to handle any type of issues related to business partner so once the customer is converted into business partner of credit management then we need to update some of the values so say for example if you want to fix a credit which which you want to issue by the company so first thing is we need to update the credit segment a credit segment is nothing but a hierarchy structure which used in credit management and then we need to update based on the credit segment we need to update the credit limit requested by the customer in business partner that means now we have a data of master data now business partner and also what he is requesting then we need to understand what is rating and ranking and again in rating and ranking there are two methods are there so if you are using a existing customer so no need to depend on any external rating agency so directly we can update the rating and ranking and we can pull that data to business partner but if you are using external rating and ranking for a new customer we need to import this data from external rating agency so for this excel interface is mandatory and we can update this external uh, external rating and ranking to the business partner master data so now this master that means the business partner consists of whatever the request he is requesting and also the he know, he has a rating and ranking then we need to divide the customers into different groups such as high low medium or based on their company scenario such as small scale industries large scale industries so like that we need to divide this based on this credit group we need to fix as per our organization limitations we need to fix the credit limit so for each and every credit group of customers so then we need to update the scoring also so by integrating this credit limit requested by the customer rating and ranking customer credit group limit defined credit scoring everything is integrated to credit segment again after that we need to update so some of the integrations such as from say for example if you are taking existing customer so we require the uh, existing data of accounts receivable of the customer so then if you are going to give a new customer so then we need to integrate with sales and distribution because we we require sales order this is also called as document class so and based on this document class there is a automatic credit control is there by using this functionality we can calculate all these functions and the final output is credit exposure so how much credit limit we can give to the customer so here you can see one example the customer has requested 15 lakhs credit limit and his ranking is a and the customer credit group is divided into three categories and for each and every category there is a limit defined and this is the scoring which we have updated to the customer so this is the document value which is updated that the sales order or accounts receivable document based on that the credit exposure is calculated as 85% that means the customer is requesting 15 lakhs but we are giving the 12 lakh 75000 only so this process is known as statical credit management so if the accounts receivable credit management means that is dynamic so which we are going to use in standard one but this is purely a statical process so we are going to analyze the customer based on the analysis we are giving the credit limit now once the credit is issued to the customer the difference between the credit limit requested by the customer and also the credit which is issued by the organization is known as down payment so the invoice is nothing but whatever the credit he is requesting so based on that we are going to update the down payment and the remaining balance is treated as open items now this data is carry forward to collections management say we had issued the credit to the customer 1275000 so now we need to recover the payment from the customer in this case also 
first we need to convert the customer into business partner of collections management then we need to update some strategies say for example in organization there are three types of people are there so who are working as a collection specialist and these three people combined together is known as collection group so as per the organization policy we have set of rules and conditions for this group so this is updated in collection strategy then the group of company course which involves in the collections management is known as collection segment and the group of collection segment is known as collection profile all these things are the part of master data so once if it is updated to master data then the second step is we have a responsibility to import so whatever the invoice is prepared by the fi people so we need to import this data and we need to update this in work list item so that means a work list will be generated once the work list has been generated we need to design the promise to pay for the amount which is given to the customer that means the credit which is issued to the customer based on promise to pay we need to plan the installment plans and again in installment plans we have two types of installment plans are there user defined installment plans and system delivered installment plans then we need to update the customer reason Con, a customer contact reason whether he is replying or uh, well, what is his response so we need to resubmit the data if the customer is due then if this customer is not responded to the payments which is due then we are going to send this data to fi people the fi people has a responsibility to raise the dunning notice so okay the dunning notice is forward to the customer but the customer did not respond for the dunning notice so first letter second letter even though they had sent the legal notice also but the customer did not respond then what we are going to do is we are converting this disputed amount we are converting this balance amount into dispute case in dispute management we are going to generate the dispute case once the dispute case has been generated there are three types of scenarios are there if the customer makes a payment immediately after raising the dispute case so then what is the scenario we need to post and we need to test it so what is the scenario and if the customer is not in position to make the payment but he is able to make partial payment of disputed amount what is the scenario and if the customer doesn't makes any payment after raising the dispute case also what is the scenario so these three types of scenarios we need to discuss in dispute management then if the customer clear the payment there is no issue at all if the customer clears partial payment of disputed amount also there is no issue at all because the balance amount is converted into dispute case later he is going to clear it but he did not clear any payment in any mode then it is converted into bad debts this should be updated into the gl account as a bad debts account now we have one more step is there to recover this bad debts we have a concept called debt recovery management so if there any chance is there to recover this bad debts we can raise the debt recovery case and we can generate this case type so these are all the part of fscm process that means business process credit based on the credit we are giving the invoice that means we are creating the invoice down payment and also the credit which is issued to the customer which is treated as open items then how we need to recover the payment in the collections management if there are any dues are there so then how you are going to raise the dispute case so then if the dispute case is not cleared then how we are going to discuss about debt recovery management so this is total four sub modules are there which is highly integrated modules and in most of the cases after raising the dispute case the customer can respond because if he did not respond for the dispute case his rating and ranking will be go down in by external rating agency that means if his rating and ranking will fall he cannot apply any credit from other organizations so that is the reason the customer in any mode the customer mostly respond to this dispute case that is the main advantage of dispute management so then the after raising the dispute case there is a bad debt process is there then we have one more application is also there which is called bill or direct 
So a below direct is a tool which is used to communicate in between customer and vendor. Say for example, in below direct what we are doing is we are taking the customer. For this customer, our basis people they are going to generate some. Uh, they are going to update this customer data into customer portal, and they are going to send the credentials such as user ID, password, and other activities. So whenever a customer enter these credentials, he can view all the things that whatever the communication made with us, such as invoice, open items, all the things without getting any request, he can view all the things, and also he can raise the disputes if there any. and it will be reflected to the vendor in the form of work list items so this is called notifications on work list so this is the process of below direct activity so all these functions is the part of scenario 1 which we are going to discuss okay so this is the basic introduction so that means this is this is the scenario which i am following so in this case what i am going to do is i am going to start from converting customers into business partners of credit management so that means from master data synchronization of credit management i will start the sessions then i will go one by one so we will discuss according to the business scenario okay so this we will start from tomorrow because he is also going to attend and uh, related to this concepts i am going to send my own material so including customized customized material as well as end user material and i am going to send some case studies and business blueprints also wherever it is required for each and every sub module you can see in my system so business blueprints So like this, I am going to send some business blueprints wherever it is required. So based on this, whatever we have discussed, all the things are there. Just now only I told you. So there is collection strategy, work list items, and also how we need to integrate business partner master data. So all these things are covered in syllabus structure. So once if I if you come if we are able to complete this business process, so everything is clear. and along with this i'm going to forward you some simulation files which is also called as sim files so these sim files are helpful to you to understand some applications which we cannot run in ides say for example suresh uh, i am not able to hear you just type in chat box otherwise say early warning list so we cannot run this early warning list in our ids system but we need to understand it so in that case once if you install the simulation file in your system simulation player licensed sim player so we can run this so that we can understand the concept what is early warning list <laughs> So like this, some sim files are there, which helpful to you to understand in a practical way. Okay. So these are the things which I am going to forward it to you. And um, so today I I will do one thing. So before the class tomorrow, I am going to give the date wise schedule to you. Based on the schedule, we are going to discuss. And Monday to Friday is the sessions. So Monday to Friday is the session. and we have a session in between 8 to 9 as per the indian standard time okay. so 